So here is a little unboxing and demo of the OSA airbrush compressor kit. So instruction manual, UK 3-pin puck. Let's uncoil it and see if it will reach the socket. It's alright. Could be longer. You've got the air hose, which is braided. It's alright, it's quite flexible. The connector seems okay. Metal, metal connectors. Of holders. Now this is the compressor. Look at how tiny that is. We'll test it out and see how strong it is. It runs on a rechargeable battery, which is already in there. Power switch on the bottom right here. I'm not going to turn it on until I get everything set up and ready. You got high, medium, and low indicator on top, and that's it. It's like a size of like a burger, like quarter pounder. Obviously, you need a gun, an airbrush gun. Quite a typical graffiti feed on top. Kind of all metal construction of the tools, droppers, and the part details. If you do need to disassemble it and uh, kind of uh, maintain it, this will be the battery indicator. At the moment, it's on three greens. And um, if you switch it on, It's on low at the moment, so it will automatically cut off once they sense that you have enough pressure. So ideally, this is how you set it up. You've got a little pen holder on the side, plug it in. I usually have a mat somewhere here, like a silicon mat, so the ink doesn't drip onto my worktop. You can hear the volume of the motor differently when it's plugged in and not. So basically when it's plugged in, it is a bit stronger. You can tell the motor spin up a lot faster. So this will affect the way that you use your um, spray gun. So if you are used to, for example, um, low, medium and high, those are the three settings that you have. So you can't adjust the PSI or anything like that. You got low, medium, and high. So obviously the low with the battery and the low with a uh, plug-in power it is different. So you just might have to adjust your touch accordingly. So to start with, just to show you guys, let's uh, spray some simple water and then I will do some ink and show you. So this is on low setting at the moment. When you first press down, it's only air coming out. When you press down and push back, you activate the needle um, where it kind of vaporizes the water into droplets. Um, to change the strength, all you need to do is kind of a uh, uh, tap it. So this is the strongest, and you can see the mist coming out. And if I just draw some water. <clears throat> Spray some water mark on there for you guys to see. Yeah, that's the tank empty. Okay, so let's put some ink in it and uh, test it out. So I've got some red ink here. This is um, acrylic specific for airbrush, so it's already diluted. Should be enough for now. Sink to the bottom. <clears throat> so this is on high. I think there's not enough ink. Three drops is not enough. I don't think it's unique to this gun, but every time you finish spray, uh, finish your run. The next run, when even if it is just on air, it will blow out some uh, droplets. So it's always a good idea to have a uh, kind of a, uh, a a rough piece to soak up all the excess ink before you actually start spraying. Okay, let's try up the low lower setting. If I pull the trigger a bit softer, see if I can control it.
You can see. Let me do a very light touch here. Now, like most of my video, I don't know if it is good or bad. I love you guys. You guys can tell me on the comment section. So this is the overspray I was talking about. So every time you finish a run, just make sure you blow off the axis before you start. I think that's quite common sense actually. On here is the kind of a high setting. You can see it's a lot more concentrated, even it's the same distance. So here is why I'm trying to like your fine spray mist using the low setting. I mean, the setting point for this particular machine, I guess, is um, definitely the portability. So um, if you are using this for, uh, let's say, face painting, I think tattoo, things like that, and you don't want to plug it into electricity, that's fine. It has rubberized uh, kind of a pointy feet, which helps to absorb some of the vibration from the motor. So there is a humming noise, but it's not like a compressor that, you know, for example, this is what I'm using at the moment, and this is really really noisy obviously the compressor will only kicks in when the pressure is low enough for it to work but when it actually kicks in it's really really noisy definitely not something i will do at this time of night in my shed i'll probably wake up all my neighbors Obviously my uh, spraying skill <laughs> is not that great, but to get a uh, first even coat and then you can do the details afterwards with another color. Um, these two sprayer here, portability wise, definitely is a win. Thank you for watching guys. Let's see you next time with more interesting gadget. Bye bye.